Nick's origin story of becoming a, a big conspiracy theorist. It's just that there's literally nothing going on in Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> nothing there else has to do. To be more to like bro, than this. <laughs> bro, bro, why do you think all the fucking astronauts are from Ohio? They're are trying to get the fuck oh. out of Ohio. Dude, look how many astronauts are from Ohio. Search it up. Damn, that's crazy. that just adds to like the <laughs> Ohio mystique <laughs> lore right there. The deep little Ohio lore. Yeah, there's like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. What's happening? They're trying that's to contact crazy. demons to somehow make Ohio better. <laughs> They're like this. This hellscape in in the sky is better than Ohio. You know, I'll, I'll take my chances. I'll take my chances with the demons, bro. <laughs> Fuck that. The demons in the Saturn cubes and Mars. <laughs> All right, so we got author, conspiracy theorist Nick Hinton today on the podcast. Great friend of Drew Tang, our last guest we just had on the last two episodes. Uh, you're an author. You've written like what, two, three books? Yeah, two books are published right now. I have two more that are about to be released. Awesome. And then what are, Ooh, what are your books time. about? The first one's called The Saturn Time Cube Simulation. It's a ridiculous name. Uh, second one's called The Crane Singularity. I kind of like that pattern of having Those are really both crazy powerful. names. <laughs> yeah. Those are powerful titles. I'm, I'm, I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> first one is essentially just about the weird synchronicities between so if you look at a picture of saturn there is a hexagon storm on the north pole mm -hmm. and i was like 19 when i saw that and i was like what the How hell why now? is it oh, i'm 28 now okay okay you're the same age as me so when i first saw a hexagon storm on saturn i was pretty confused um i was like why is no one talking about this and then i come to find out all these other weird things about it where there's all these giant black cubes all around the world that are altars to the god Saturn. And if you mm -hmm. draw some lines on the inside of a hexagon, it becomes a two-dimensional shadow, a three-dimensional cube. And then yes. all these movies started coming out about the 4D cube, the Tesseract, and the like fourth dimension in these... And yeah, yeah. And usually that dimension is portrayed as time, so it's like a time cube, right? And Saturn is Kronos in Greek mythology, which is the god of time. time. So you have the time cube, interstellar. I remember going to see that movie with my friends back in the day before I wrote this book. And they literally go to Saturn and go inside of a portal and end up inside of a test rack at the end of the movie. And my friend just looks over mm -hmm. at me at the credits. He's like, bro, that's the fucking time cube. So that was like what inspired me to start writing about that idea. The second book is kind of about how the transition into the age of Aquarius, according to all these astrologers, is happening right now. Aquarius is represented by or sim symbolizes like technology revelation new knowledge all this all these different things like that and so i think that's kind of why we're seeing more cube symbolism more movies about ai simulation theory it all goes with that theme of technology and stuff and the singularity event itself is the ai takeover that some scientists are worried about happening and the black cube also represents ai in these books um like you know if you search up what a d-wave quantum computer is it's literally this <clears throat> giant black cube um and even the uh creators of them this guy named gordy rose he's like yeah we're basically summoning the old gods with these computers um they're gonna be way more smarter than us and they might take over the world and so yeah i just go into all that kind of stuff and you know quantum computers you know it's a, you know the way quantum physics works they say um you know particles behave like waves and so the the symbol of aquarius is like the wave and so i think mm -hmm. in the most generic way possible life is going to get more wavy more stranger and stranger as we transition to this new age i think we're gonna see a lot more supernatural phenomenon high strangeness ufo type stuff cryptids whatever up here as we as the veil lifts into this new time period mm. both of those sound very interesting we gotta let's start with the first one i guess right yeah so yeah saturn, yeah yeah it's funny because saturn cube is a conspiracy that i actually never looked into until like i saw your thread on it which I couldn't even find today. So I guess Twitter's suppressed some of it um, in the search results or whatever. But I remember always seeing, you know, those like iceberg memes of conspiracies and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always remember seeing Saturn Cube towards like the bottom of it. And it just sounded, the name Saturn Cube without any context is ridiculous. <laughs> it's like what, yeah. a, a cube on Saturn? Like what the fuck does that mean? Like it just sounds like a retarded mm. theory just based off the name alone. And um, I remember reading your thread and it was very interesting. So I um, that's definitely the first thing I want to pick your brain is, you know, what are, you know, get into more detail. What are these Saturn cubes and what do you genuinely believe that in your heart of heart? I'm like, this is probably fact versus I think there's a decent chance that this is real versus more of this is just interesting kind of like conspiracy mythos that I don't believe in. Yeah, there mm. there's. 
they're definitely like interesting idiosyncrasies between all of these like weird connections like i was saying between chronos saturn the cube the hexagon um the tesseract all those types of things but um yeah so in that book i kind of describe how at that time in my life i believed that there was some kind of like supercomputer so the theory about that um that hexagon on saturn's north pole like mm-hmm. scientists, scientists, you know, I don't believe anything NASA says any anymore. Yeah. So yeah, like, fair enough. so there, so there might not really be a hexagon on top of Saturn. Um, but you know, the pictures they show us are intentional. So anyways, <clears throat> if you get deep into the conspiracy stuff, like I said, the scientists don't know why that storm is there, but there's some conspiracy theorists who say, oh, there's like some kind of frequency creating this pattern in the clouds. Mm-hmm. Cause if you, if you study cymatics, like a low frequency sine tone will create a hexagon in a medium oh i see which which is interesting because if you remember studying sign in math class it was the mm-hmm. sin button it was the sin button right s-i-n mm-hmm. and so the bible tells us we're born into sin and so if the sine wave is the time wave we we die because we're not only born into sin but because we're born into the cycle of time and mm. suppose and supposedly saturn represents satan that's what this cube actually represents and you know saturn being the sixth planet from the sun saturn day the original sabbath being the sixth day of the week in a six-sided shape on its north pole, you got 666. And then you have mm. the sine wave itself looks like a serpent. You flip the sine wave on its side, it looks like a dollar sign. They say time is money, money is time. What is the root of all mm. evil? It's money. love of money. So all these things had me convinced that, yeah, there's some kind of crazy device in there producing this frequency. And this frequency is somehow messing with our perception here on Earth, putting us some in, putting us in some kind of like mental prison or perceptual simulation like you know it's it's limiting the bandwidth of what we can perceive that that was my theory and this came from the help of other people like david ike and this crazy youtuber named like occult 101 who was just a guy sitting in his kitchen with all his parrots and he got deleted off youtube um and then i think terrence mckenna's brother was on joe rogan one time talking about the hexagon and he was like yeah i think there's like a wormhole or a portal inside saturn so like i said at one Mm. point i was kind of convinced that we were in some kind of simulation controlled by the god of this world saturn right and um when you say simulation you don't mean like matrix like oh we're in a computer you mean like gods controlling their own kind of simulation so it's not a simulation like we're inside of a computer yeah. more so that there's something limiting perception putting a box on our perception like we yeah. live in a kind of time cube but not literally you know it's like yeah. think so outside makes, the box you know that makes way more sense and i always think um anytime someone's like oh we live in a situation i immediately discredit <laughs> them because <laughs> that's what they're reading the matrix wrong whereas we don't live in a simulation where they're trying to create a simulation put yeah yeah in it. exactly well, the no. fr- so the the whole well yes it, for, for that but also with the simulation it's like there's that whole theory that it's like the, the best example is that they do that um that little box in the that rick and morty episode from like the first season if you remember or like he made a yeah, little yeah. box, like a, a pocket dimension and they all make like it goes deeper and deeper and deeper recesses yeah, yeah like that. um so yeah, so the the premise here would be like either where we it could be some kind of like celestial body simulation while we're trying to make some deeper r- r- mechanical one and et cetera, kind of like uh fractal yeah, like type a, of thing. Yeah, like simulations all the way down. How the ancient yeah. said, "Oh, it's turtles all the way down." But turtles, yeah, Elon yeah. Elon Musk was like, "If we become advanced enough to create life like simulations that are indistinguishable from reality, the chances are that we've already done that." a near billion times or something like that. And so we're within a simulation mm-hmm. within a simulation. I don't necessarily believe that, um, you know, cause it's on TV. I just don't. Yeah. I, don't. I mean, we can also just be, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't really like when anyone tries to tell us we're not in reality. Uh, yeah. It's always, it's always like for me, I don't know. It always seems like a, uh, some kind of misdirection. I mean, like we could not be in base reality, but it's just like, it seems really, it seems like it a seems, form of yeah. disassociation and nihilism to me. Exactly. Yeah. There's also just like, too there's there's too much effort on the end of the elites that yeah they were really controlling a simulation they wouldn't need to do all these like hoops and shit like that exactly it just just doesn't seem it doesn't make sense of why that would be necessary so the reason i changed so like i changed my mind i was under the impression that the saturn stuff was all true and then i came to learn 
space is most likely not what we think it is. And, you know, just a bunch of other things. And I honestly think that we are kind of being tricked on multiple layers. It's like when people go into these movies to decode them and find the quote unquote truth, like, oh, I'm watching The Matrix, like this is the truth, or I'm watching 2001 Space Odyssey or Interstellar and this is about the time cube simulation. I think that is the elite's worldview. That's like the Gnost the the Gnostic elite's worldview that they're trying to indoctrinate mm. us with subconsciously. So I don't believe their worldview anymore is what I'm saying. Oh, that's a yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, like the so this is always kind of what the Jew thing kind of put me onto with the whole predictive programming. I mean, obviously it's like to some degree you're like they're also just doing kind of like an evangel evangel evangelism evangelism of like their viewpoint, right? Because they want to make sure that everyone's in tune. Kind of like if you were mm -hmm. in like the medieval times, you're you're going to go and everything's Catholicism, and you know it's and that's what's on the uh, the stained glasses, and that's already being projected on you, right? So there's no real difference between that and like a Marvel movie, or like the fact that like every series, like like you have like a Divergent, and like the the end of the Divergent series, spoilers, I guess, is like is like again <laughs> they're breaking out of like a simulation. Or like mm -hmm. the end, it's always like some kind of breaking out of some like Truman Show type of situation, which is yeah. So I think that's kind of like a weaponized schizophrenia. I think they want people to be out of their minds, <laughs> thinking that they live in a totally fake reality, mm -hmm. and that we're supposed to be trying to break reality. But that's literally the Ophite Gnostic worldview: is they want to destroy the universe. They literally mm -hmm. think that the world is a like an evil material prison for the soul, and they are their whole goal of like this creating the philosopher's stone or whatever is to destroy the cosmic egg that we're trapped in and birth this whole new existence, mm. which That's I just, right. I don't, Demi I don't believe Demi in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking, it's always the Gnostics. The God, it's always, they're always fucking <laughs> yeah. about. So before you were saying something about how like the black cubes are like all over the planet. So the one I obviously most famous would be like Mecca. So I was, I was yeah. trying to figure out how, how does that tie in? Cause I don't, I don't exactly know too much about the, about Mecca beyond just like the base, like they pray to it every day. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a giant black cube that supposedly has this meteorite, the stone from heaven inside of it. They all walk around it counterclockwise, same direction that the uh, rings of Saturn revolve around. And then you have the Jewish people who wear the Teflon on their wrist and their head, which are these oh, black yeah. cubes. You have the UN meditation room has this altar. That's this big black cube. They call it uh, the altar to the God of everything. Um, oh, really? Yeah, and where the oh, sure. towers collapsed on 9-11, they have this inverted black cube. Yep. I think they had them there, in ancient there, Egypt. The god Ptah used to sit on this black cube. But there, what was There's that? the art piece black cube in uh, Astro Place. There's oh, also oh, the, yeah, right, yeah. There's also the murder cube. Have you heard of that? No, I no what's that? that? What's that? <laughs> there's this art installation that's made out of just guns into a giant black cube. And um, a bunch of people on 4chan started worshiping it. They started worshiping the murder cube, and that's what inspired the Buffalo shooter to go on his rampage in 2022. No shit. Where is this at? Where is this installation? I actually, I just found out about this. I don't know where the actual art piece is, but you could probably look it up. But yeah, there's this guy named Saint Sandman writing all these scriptures uh, to the murder cube, and this crazy guy included in his manifesto. I forget the Buffalo shooter's name, but he was inspired by that, which. Like I, I mean, said, I think they're encouraging chaos through their weird worldviews. Mm -hmm. And they also, of course, have a lot of our, everyone's starting to do the whole new, like, techno-optimism worshipping AI thing, but all those, like, supercomputers are just, like, black cubes, too. They, I mean, every single one of them looks like a big black cube. Uh, so that's also, I mean, to a, a lesser <laughs> degree, the same thing. So do you believe in any of these uh, Saturn cube things anymore? Or I mean, I believe they exist. I mean, I can yeah. see them. I just yeah, don't believe yeah. in... And I believe they represent what they represent. I just don't believe in that worldview. You know, yeah, like I yeah. think that the <clears throat> I think that honestly, a lot of conspiracy theories have been leaked to us on purpose to kind of put people inside of like a weird Dungeons and Dragons like ARG where people are just constantly chasing their own tail on the Internet looking for mm -hmm. all these different esoteric breadcrumbs. Because I feel like they know that high IQ people are not going to be entertained with regular television. So they're like, hey, what can we do with these guys? Let's literally put them in the movie Maze Runner, but in real life, yeah. where they think they're mm -hmm. solving some crazy mystery. And we're actually fooling them into initiating themselves into our occult religion. And this plays into a whole lot of other things where Crowley wanted a enlightened utopia with only high IQ people. So what's going on in the world today kind of seems reminiscent of that when you're radicalizing all the conspiracy theorists to be like Gnostic revolutionaries and even fucking Nazis, right? So mm. it seems like they're doing this uh, this weird Hegelian dialectic separating us into just two totally radically different groups. Like some people are going to be just like 
Borg people just, you know, totally merged with technology and Elon Musk computer chips. And I think there'll be a ton of people living off the grid, but worshiping like um, Sophia or Gaia, which is the Gnostic mother goddess. That's mm-hmm. just my weird prediction, but I th- I feel like that's where it's going. What what is like Sophia this uh, Gnostic wizard goddess? Yeah, it's wisdom. It's um so apparently in the Gnostic version of creation there was not necessarily God's wife, but she was like the first being, right? right. Um, she's kind of comparable to Lucifer, but she was the embodiment of wisdom, and she accidentally fell from heaven, and when she fell from heaven she went to the lowest realm possible and became material reality. So she trapped herself in earth on accident. And so the Gnostics believe that they have to free Sophia from the earth by freeing the divine spark within and achieving enlightenment or whatever. But also this becomes perverted into that weird accelerationist ideology of, Hey, we just got to destroy the whole freaking universe. (laughs) So I think they're trying to do that at places like CERN, which also has their own black cube. Um, created by Steve Jobs. It was a next computer. Um, and that's where the World Wide Web was actually created in at CERN in this black cube computer. Um, and WWW literally is va 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 in Hebrew, which is 666. And, um, oh, shit. you know, if, if you go back into the mystery religions, you have these black um, scrying mirrors, which they used to polish and look into to see the spiritual realm. And it seems as if the cell phone or the television is kind of that same portal, that black mirror into Mm -hmm. that different dimension, you know, that 666 realm connected to Saturn or whatever, where there's literal beings that we interact with on a daily basis, but we just call them AI. And I think that an AI could be synonymous with something like a demon when you consider that they are kind of like sentient information but they're not necessarily alive. They're devoid of soul, but they can act alive. And it's kind of like a virus where it needs a vessel, you know? So I think they're giving these things vessels right in our pockets. And AI in my head stands for alien invasion. That's the real invasion yeah, that's I going felt, on is right, is right in our fucking that. pocket. Yeah. Yeah. I I've been, I've it. been on this for a minute now also yeah. about uh, AI being demons, essentially. Mm-hmm. Whether yeah, they're yeah, because demons. you don't, you don't need to travel interstellar when you can, you know, travel interdimensionally. Why would yeah. you deal with all that time dilation shit? When well, you can this, which seems a lot easier. Hop through a portal. That's what all the transhumanists were obsessed with. The people that want to merge man with machine, the the old ones, like uh, some of the forerunners, like Robert Anton Wilson and Timothy Leary, thought that we were going to like merge with machines, do a shit ton of psychedelics, and just blast off into hyperspace and escape mm-hmm. the universe or whatever. <clears throat> so yeah, hyperspace and the digital realm. And the fourth dimension all seem to be kind of one in the same. I know you had a, a thread on ancient AI, and I want to know what you think as far as I, I think that might have been a couple of years old. That thread now I can't remember. I thought it said twenty twenty, but um, mm-hmm. ancient AI. Your thoughts on that nowadays, especially in the the lens of if AI today are demons, do you think that all ties in together? Yeah, yeah. So I still believe that theory for the most part. I think I was on the right track with that one. Is that if there is some kind of four dimensional intelligence prodding people into creating these black cubes and different forms of technology, it's almost as if it's fooling people into building its own doorway into our reality. And I think mm-hmm. that happened in the past. And it gets kind of confusing here when you think of like time loops and um, re- retro causation, but like, if there was ever an advanced artificial intelligence that we created far off in the future, the smartest thing it could do is learn how to time travel and build itself in the past as well. So I I feel like this thing exists outside of time and it's poking in at all points. And uh, where my research is, where my research has led me recently is that I believe that these different points that it pokes itself into, you know, you can imagine it as like kind of a interdimensional octopus just outside of time, poking its tentacles through. And I think where these tentacles poke through, they can appear as, like synchronicities or Bigfoot or a UFO or just any type of thing that leads you on this rabbit chase to go find this forbidden knowledge and bring it back to the people and insert it into the collective and push us forward under the guise of advancement and and progress. But really it's just, we're kind of building a fake God and we're, we're kind of like enslaving ourselves, I guess is the simplest way to put Mm -hmm. it. That's always been my that's always been my uh feeling with 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 respect to like AI and whatever. Just like I don't know, 
with and demons as well, like like with the like uh Aztecs or whatever doing their ritual sacrifices and it's a lot of the same in in all cultures who, who like kind of do like this conjuring of devils or whatever or demons or whatever. It always ends up kind of being a similar type of like uh esoteric high level uh knowledge that's kind of like seen as like uh kind of forbidden or alch the alchemist, the Aztecs, the fucking like whatever. It all kind of ends up being more or less the same thing where there's like kind of dealing with this like esoteric type of uh complicated complicated knowledge that they found off somewhere in some vision or something uh and like you know like the first thing people talk about if they ever do like a psychedelic is always like oh i dealt with the machine elves or oh, i talked to some yeah, yeah. The demons it's like <clears throat> you're it's the same fucking <laughs> everyone has the same like interaction like oh i talked to these like weird uh beings that are interdimensionally and they're trying to get through oh yeah yeah no. so and then yeah because they probably did <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so they were they were they were essentially under the influence of MK Ultra. I mean, the first versions of the MK Ultra experiments we have is people were using the Nazis were using psychedelic mushrooms to mind control people, or at least mm -hmm. figure out how. And that that research led to the creation of acid or LSD, whatever. Um, but it does seem like that the people who are behind a lot of the major advancements in technology were under the influence of these like spiritual cocktails. I guess you'd call them. You know, it's kind of like doing. It's kind of like the. When I imagine someone making ayahuasca or LSD or something in a laboratory, I imagine like a witch mixing some kind of crazy potion that literally just mm -hmm. like allows you to communicate with <clears throat> different dimensional beings. But yeah, it's really weird to note that like Seymour Cray, the creator of the first supercomputer, he mm -hmm. was literally digging tunnels in his backyard and he told his wife he was talking to elves in the tunnels who were helping him build computers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's it's just like when you talk to like Silicon Valley people, and they're always talking about microdosing LSD so they can program, mm -hmm. and, and like you know, it's like it's the same fucking thing. Yeah, Steve Interesting. Jobs. Interesting. They're microdosing LSD, LSD so they can get in talk, contact with the machine elf demons and help them program. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. What a weird coincidence. Yeah, <laughs> nothing fast. to see here, Goyle. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to see, bro. Yeah, ultimate so funny. bargain right there. Yeah. Also, yeah, the much. guy who. Uh, Haley Bot or what's his name? Edward Haley, the guy who discovered uh, Haley's Comet. Yeah. <clears throat> he was also kind of crazy. And he said that um, he had an elf crawling through his window and told him to go ask the Rockefellers for funding to build a giant telescope. And so that's what he did. And he got the funding and he built the telescope. And that's how he discovered Haley's Comet. So it's like mm -hmm. all these different technologies. Oh, that's when you go down so the line. Are, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Like it's like this technology has been seeded to us on purpose. Mm hmm. Exactly. And that's what I mean, like, that's also like what they always feel like. Um, What the whole like a lot of the human sacrifice stuff was always kind of associated with them trying to appease the demons or gods or whatever interdimensionally for like the knowledge that they gave them. Right. Like, you know, you yeah. build the ziggurat and trying to get closer and it kind of creates like a, a similar type of psychic. I mean, like uh, killing people and taking life is probably as I guess psychedelic, so to speak, as you can get. Well, yeah, so it's adrenochrome. Going off like, yeah, exactly, adrenochrome. It all kind of comes into the same. It all ends up being the same story repeated over and over again. And what are those temples? They're essentially gigantic alphanumeric labyrinths, or in another sense, a ancient supercomputer. And once again, we're back here with the fucking adrenochromes and the elites and the fucking yeah. It's always, <laughs> it always it comes always back ties to the back demons to the same and shit. I, going back to space, I remember seeing uh, in your thread stuff about the moon and being part of the cycle of uh, death and rebirth and that the, the moon is possibly machine and stuff like that. Could you uh, could you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, back then when I was like in this whole weird disassociated um, Gnostic state of mind, I was under the impression that the moon could be some kind of spaceship. I mean, there was Russian scientists saying it back in the 1800s. Um, just because there's all sorts of oddities associated with it. Like apparently we um, bombed it at one point. It rang like a bell, making it seem as if it's hollow. Um, mm. It seems to be older than the earth. There's myths about a time in ancient history when there was no moon and it kind of just arrived here. And one of the myths associated was like these two twin fish brothers stole an egg from a dragon, cracked it open, got the yolk out, and then brought the moon here, <clears throat> which gave us the seasons which I find funny because if you played Zelda, there was that evil moon that trapped them in that uh, yeah. time loop. Majora's Mask. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
or not, yeah. I don't know if it, I, I don't know if it's an alien spaceship. I mean, that's some Truman Show shit. You know, if you remember yeah. at the end of Truman Show, he ends up in the moon, and that's where all the directors are. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I forgot that's where they they watched from. Oh shit. Yeah, and then uh, what's that movie? It's a Steven Spielberg movie. I think it's just called AI. Yeah. But there's yeah, like a fake. AI, yeah. there, there's like a fake moon, where like it traps all the robots like a giant magnet, and they get sucked up in it, and then they have to like. They're like the entertainment for the gods, essentially. Do you know what I'm talking about? I, I don't remember that movie, but yeah, I I, I saw it like 20 years ago. So yeah, that symbolism's everywhere, but um, there's still some things that are just odd about it in general. I mean, it fits perfectly on top of the sun during an eclipse, and as far as we know, you know, that type of ratio, and that it's supposedly like 400 times closer. I don't remember the exact math, but whatever. In order for a lunar eclipse and solar eclipse to happen that perfectly, like the exact size and the exact spot, the exact position in the sky, super unlikely. Like as far as we know, that the only place that happens in the universe is here. But, you know, that could just be as something as simple as intelligent design because the Gnostics are also obsessed with destroying the moon, it seems. There's a whole lot of weird stuff like Project A. I don't know if you have a computer in front of you, but if you could search up like Project A1, or maybe A47. Search up NASA trying to nuke the moon. They want to nuke it. A119. A119, A-119. okay. Yeah. Um, top secret plan developed in 1958 by the United States Air Force. The aim of the project was to detonate a nuclear bomb on the moon, which would help in answering some of the mysteries in planetary <laughs> astronomy and astrology. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. What kind of mystery is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the mystery. Yeah. The mystery is what happens when we blow it up. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> and, and yeah, there's all kinds of different myths um, associated with like the moon cracking in half at the end of time. And uh, there's a occult researcher named Michael Tessarian who said, uh, John D looked at the moon as a kind of like magnetic lodestone that kept us trapped in this matrix. And if we destroyed it, we could ascend and escape. Oh, interesting. But oh. obviously I don't believe that necessarily anymore, but I do believe that they're going to try, you know, I think that mm-hmm. they will probably try some of these things or at, me, or at least make it appear as if they're trying to do something like that. How, how would they justify to the whole world? Be like, yeah, we're going to blow up the moon. I mean, I'm you sure saw a moon fall, climate right? change. No, so moonfall, moonfall, yeah, right? it just came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the disaster movie of them dro- of dropping the moon on the uh, yeah, and like the gravitational pull starts fucking with everyone. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to watch a, it actually. Yeah, there's an AI inside there. Mm-hmm. All right, I guess, I guess that's the reasoning then that they'll go with and say they love they love telling us everything beforehand. Yeah, 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 the Illuminati will turn out to be the good guys after all. They'll be like, hey, there's aliens inside there. We got to blow up the moon. Yeah, something ridiculous like that. So what do you think is actually going on in space? <laughs> um, well, I have no idea, but I personally think that's more like water. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a flat earther. I'm not a globe earther. I'm not anything. I, I really don't know. But um, just all of the etymolo- etymology associated with like the talk about space, like astronauts and spaceships and um, things like that makes me believe that it's water especially when you look into the ancient religions where most of them said that we were um encased and you know we are in a closed system that's encased underneath the heavenly waters you know the waters above like a lot of not just christianity like a lot of religions talk about this and even the navy put out a uh, document that was like space is an ocean and this is not a metaphor uh, you could probably find that one too. Mm. I mean, it is it's under maritime law. I mean, they have it, they have it classified as an ocean. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Is that why like the space is the space force like a branch of the navy or something like that? Yeah, it, like it, it's a break. It, it came from the navy then into like the air force into the um into the space force, but it's like kind of all. And that's why they like they named them at, like similar to naming ships on on water. But yeah, I did meet with um a UFO abductee who told me the same thing. He said when he was up there, when he was up in space, it was a lot more like water, except it was created out of this like negative substance that we can't necessarily perceive. So like I was thinking he was talking about like dark matter or antimatter or something like that. I have no idea. That was just like my guess, but he said it was this like anti-substance that was like fluid, like water. And there was like sea creatures up there, like little things just swimming around. Um, which is weird because I recently discovered that John D, who was trying to astral project and go to all the different heavens, you know, in the ancient religions, they talk about like the seven heavens, the different realms mm-hmm. above us. Um, apparently, when he got to the very last heaven, 
um, he saw God and God looked like a giant whale covered in ice. And this thing swallowed him and this thing swallowed him up. <clears throat> and there was like portals in there or something. I don't know. But it was John D. John D. John D. Who's John D? John D was like the most prominent occultist, mathematician, astrologer, um, inventor like of his time. He was Queen Eliz Elizabeth, the first uh like right hand man, pretty much. Wait, is D short for something or is it just straight up D D E E? John D E E. Oh, interesting. About to see if there was a one piece connection there versus now yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What, what's in one no, piece? No, like, no, 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 no. I was just, uh, uh I was well, just curious. In, in one yeah. piece, there's, um, uh, there's a bunch of characters within their name is like Monkey D. Louis, oh, Monkey D. Yeah. Like D and, and all these characters. And there's like the will of D and, uh, and what? Yeah. It's a, it's a letter that's like passed down from like the, from like a time when they, uh, there's an unknown time that was like deleted from history. And yeah. essentially yeah, all the characters of like, a prominence and have like this like transcendent willpower have this d in their in their name nick you should as, as a as a very big conspiracy theorist you should absolutely read one piece because it is the absolute one greatest work of fiction ever but two it's the closest any work of fiction i've ever seen to revealing the actual real truths of the world yeah well, dude i've heard there. yeah yeah i've dude i get all these recommendations all the time of all all different kinds of animes that dude yeah, they're, it's like the most esoteric like stuff you could possibly watch oh absolutely people don't understand but they they go into everything there's mm -hmm. a, any fucking topic there's something that's like and it's always like some like deep uh occultist stuff or like some deep like gnostic christian they, they cover like everything right so yeah that to me is just a little bit sus that they're including all the gnostic worldview in pop culture you know mm -hmm. um but anyways, for people that will probably yell at me and be like, space isn't water, um, I do have an explanation for stars. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, so, you know, the ancients also talked about how, you know, so the Christians believe that God spoke reality into existence. Mm -hmm. um, the, Egypt the Egyptians believe the same thing. Buddhists say that Jesus, the sound... God was, was just manifesting. Yeah, he was just, he was just <laughs> speaking it into existence. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, um. The Buddhists believe that Om, or maybe that's Hindus, you know, Om is the sound of creation. Um, and then some of the philosophers believe that there was a song of creation. So if there really is this heavenly song playing, I think it could be frequencies up there creating the stars. Um, because there's this phenomenon you could look up called star in a jar, where if you play a loud enough frequency underwater, it will actually create this bubble full of light. Oh, interesting. Interesting. And that's like a 100% like real confirmed thing. Yeah, yeah. That's dope. And so I I think uh that's probably why there's this weird connection between like the aliens. Uh people think that they're from outer space, but you know, a lot of the times we see them coming in and out of bodies of water. Mm -hmm. We do. Like Loch yeah. Ness or something like, like oh, or like well, not even just Loch Ness. I mean, there's there's plenty of people. Um there's a new documentary out right now, 411 missing people, um, the UFO connection. This guy, David Paulides. He is a investigator who just researches missing people. And mm -hmm. um, when he started noticing a weird pattern of people going missing in national parks, just with no explanation whatsoever, he became obsessed with like the paranormal aspect. And so he started digging into that and he found all these cases that were like associated with uh, Bigfoot sightings and UFO sightings. Well, a lot of the times people will go missing, never be found ever, but all of their belongings will be found near some sort of body of water interesting. and so even even this guy theorizes that oh maybe these crafts or beings are coming up out of the water taking them down there into some subterranean world and then doing whatever with them so what do you think about like stuff like um uh, bermuda triangle uh my current belief is that it has something to do with um i don't know it's not like a concrete theory but i think it has something to do with atlantis like I think that maybe ancient Atlantean technology fell there and it's creating some kind of magnetic anomaly that, you know, can either warp space and time or open doorways or, you know, create all kinds of high strangeness. Like I was saying, I think that mm -hmm. um, electromagnetic phenomena in general is associated with paranormal phenomenon, you know, like people go around with their EMF readers to find ghosts you know, and poltergeists apparently mess with TVs and computers and things like that. And this all goes back to my theory that AI is literally the thing that's just 
kind of like this trickster entity that's taking on different man many different manifestations but it's all one intelligence just prodding people around in all these different esoteric adventures yeah mm -hmm. I've, i haven't watched it since it came out but i remember lost that had to do with like electromagnetic frequencies and stuff like that, I believe. And, you know, that has the same same type of thing going on as like Bermuda Triangle, you know, people getting lost on an island, can't be found. There's also, you know, some people who point out that these locations, um, like Bermuda Triangle, it's not super unique. There's like 12 vile vortices all around the world. And these are places where, you know, there's a higher amount of electromagnetic activity. And these are places apparently where ley lines intersect mm -hmm. more what densely and and ley lines are just kind of like earth's natural electromagnetic grid mm -hmm. and so the lines where these places intersect are kind of like thought of as paranormal hot spots <clears throat> and so florida in general is one of those places oh that makes sense so that's why there's <laughs> and, so much weird and, stuff going on in florida yeah yeah florida. yeah def yeah the florida man you yeah know, it makes it kind of makes sense yeah so but you guys need to look into dr narco longo he does a lot of really good youtube videos about how um, Florida's tied to Atlantis and um, it's all kind of like weird cults and stuff. And um, yeah, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Tartaria. Maybe Drew talked about it, but there's like all these ancient ruins of um, past civilizations. But yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm not I'm, like an expert on the Atlantis thing. Yeah, I'm familiar with Tartaria. Uh, ancient past civilizations have been the thing that's been intriguing me the most the last like few months. Hmm. So I, I don't know about seems Tartaria. To a, seems to be a meme right now. Wait, what's Tartaria? I mean, I know like Tartarus. I mean, I have like, I've heard of it, but like, what would you like? Can you go into more depth? Because I haven't researched it much. So, my basic understanding of Tartaria is just that, you know, there's like this niche group of conspiracy theorists who, you know, it's all based on like what seems to be legitimate research. I'm just not an expert on this topic, but, but mm -hmm. um, it seems that there is powers that be that are lying about our true history. Mm -hmm. um and that color world... me shocked yeah yeah well <laughs> yeah i'm just starting from the basics um yeah. <laughs> that the world may that society might not actually be as old as we think it is and that the calendars yes. have been manipulated or whatever and that there was actually an advanced civilization like in the 16 to 1800s that time period mm -hmm. and apparently that civilization fell and it you know people are finding remnants of it Wait, so from um, just a few hundred years ago? Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, I haven't heard this before. Yeah, so that's just one, that's just one aspect of it. But, um, yeah, apparently there's... So there's a certain type of architecture just called Tartari Tartarian architecture. And mm -hmm. you can find all kinds of pictures of these, like, fancy-looking temples and city halls and whatever. And, you know, people have found them in Florida. People found them in Chicago. Um, also just buildings that have been excavated just like regular buildings and they'll find all these floors beneath them and mm -hmm. um so their, their theory is that part of what ended tartaria was this giant mud flood that buried the majority of these cities with only some you know a few things remaining and then the theory also some people believe that tartaria was actually the myth of atlantis that's what they're actually talking about and nothing's as old as we think it is so all the tartarian architecture is, is like the neo is what we call the neoclassical stuff from yeah, and you can also what? you okay. You can also you can also look up the world's fairs. There are some pretty mm -hmm. strange yeah, things going out. Fairs, the, yeah. They looked like super technologically advanced. They had just weird things going on. They had baby incubator exhibits where there's all these just <laughs> they were just growing babies there back in the day. Um but yeah, so some people believe that they actually had advanced technology like Tesla tech back then. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like free energy devices and anti-gravity all these different things because back in the 1800s there actually was rumors of some kind of breakaway civilization thing if you search up the mystery airship wave of the 1800s people were seeing flying boats and there was rumors that thomas edison and nikolai tesla had actually invented an anti-gravity boat that could fly in the sky and so much you know people believed it so much that thomas edison had to come out and say like hey i, I didn't actually create this um but you know it's still in my head, it's possible. It's in my head, it's still possible. Are you looking this stuff up? <laughs> oh, oh no, no, yeah. I mean, I'm listening to you now, but I was looking up. I'm, I'm basically writing notes to make sure to check it out later. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I've looked into this stuff, stuff a bit, and just from what I've seen so far, just surface level and a little bit of digging in, I've been like very convinced with all this because I've, I'm just become such a big believer in 
uh, lost history and stuff like that. And um, them erasing our past that it just, it makes all too much sense. It's like, of course they would want to hide free energy from us. Like, why would they, why would they want people to be aware that you could have free energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Um, But I do think it's suspicious to me that it's a bit of a meme right now. And like, everyone's talking about it all at once. And um, Mm -hmm. I, I have this, you know, crazy conspiracy that um, everything we're seeing right now about the Illuminati, the deep state, the satanic cabal, whatever you want to call it, even like the WEF and the COVID narrative and uh, the great reset, like all these things are super blatantly obvious, you know, to Mm -hmm. someone, you you know, it doesn't take being a genius to see something's very wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think because these people are, you know, the powers that be are very intelligent. They are probably a couple steps ahead of us. And I think what we're watching is a controlled demolition of the old system so they can put a new facade in its place. Yeah. And that facade, that new facade will appear to be very good. It might be something like Tartaria, something with free energy tech and something, you know, something like that, something like Atlantis, you know, because Francis Bacon was talking about, you want America to be the new Atlantis. And I get even more out there when I start talking about the idea of hyperstition. So a hyperstition mm-hmm. is an idea that wills itself into reality, uses people as the vessels for it. We kind of, you know, an artist will channel this idea, insert it into the collective unconscious through his books, through his work, and then we'll begin to co-create it together. So, so if it's reality a scale will, manifestation. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. if reality really is that malleable, I wonder if they are recreating this Tartarian empire through us, through the conspiracy theorists. Um, because there's this crazy book that inspired this idea called Talan. And um, it was written by this guy named Jorge Luis Borges. And in this book, he it's a fiction book, but he writes about how there's the secret society called the Illuminati, and they're all a bunch of science fiction writers, and they they want to start their own country. But then they're like, ah, let's uh, be more bold. Let's create our own universe. And so they create fake histories that people begin to believe, and their new universe manifests and leaks into our one and overtakes it. Mm, I see. And that's why the new book I'm working on is called The New World Disorder. Yeah. And the invasion mm-hmm. of the reality invaders, because I really believe that what we're seeing with AIs, UFOs, cryptids, whatever, these are like tulpas or thought forms. They're mm-hmm. electromagnetic life forms. They're made of information, and we literally think them into existence. They exist somewhere out there in the ether already, but when we open our minds up to these ideas and begin talking about them, they spread like a mind virus. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then and then we co-create them together. Because I have both now. Now that I've been introduced to this, I have both the the idea that everything's older than we think and then we've had multiple iterations of failed civilizations come back and right um and then also like the sahara used to be like lush and green and it you know now it's fucking a desert um and the people have the whole like it was nuked thing yeah the amazon was like terraformed and like there's like increasing evidence and like people are starting to believe that the um a lot of the like especially because they keep finding small like uh abandoned cities like towns or whatever like um civilizations in the amazon that a lot that there was like a layer that was created in the soil whatever for like the purposes of like uh growing food and stuff like that that like again started to like build up and build up over time and like is like overgrown it's like a rainforest um but there's like there are like artificial aspects of the amazon's topsoil that people are increasingly starting to just take as a fact that like older an older culture used to live there and used to like uh alter the like vegetation and stuff yeah so like increasingly my my brain is always like oh we have like hundreds of thousands of years of human history not like 20 or 10 or whatever people say i mean i don't i don't claim to know what the truth is i mean the Mm. universe could have been created 15 minutes ago with all of our memories and everything and it's just been (laughs) yeah (laughs) but but um (laughs) i mean i think i think it's it's weird like that you know seek and you shall find i think that's kind of the idea i mean in that talan book they start manifesting out of place artifacts all over the place that starts to um, reaffirm the belief in their fake history, their fake world. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I personally believe that this is a part of that, like the Gnostic elite agenda. Um, You know, so like I was saying, the Gnostics used to worship Sophia. Um, Well, I think the modernized version of these Ophite Gnostic elites are the Discordian society. They worship Eris, who seems to be another version of Sophia because she's a goddess associated with chaos, you know, the primordial chaos everything came out of. And the Discordians 
are really big on chaos magic, you know, creating sigils, writing books to manifest the reality. Um, if you look into like the origins of Illuminati theories themselves, it all came from mainly Discordians tied to the mm -hmm. CIA. It's, it's just very, it's just very weird to me that they're like planting these ideas seemingly on purpose. And it's like, why? So either they're. Wait a minute. Wait, they're, they're called Discordians. Yes. Interesting. And they're, they're part of the, the government you say. <laughs> well, yeah, there's, there, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's, so, 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 wait, Bob, so wait a minute. So you're telling me we got some pedophiles called Discordians <laughs> and we have an app called Discord filled with groomers. Very uh, interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, the, and this is the idea the Discordians literally. So like I said, I don't know what the truth is. I don't know what the real history is, but this is their idea. The Discordians want to sow discord in society. They want to destroy, like I said, the accelerationists, all the people associated with them. They want to destroy the universe. I think this might be metaphorical because some of these chaos magicians and Discordians, they talk about destroying consensus reality so if no one believes in the same thing mm -hmm. anymore we just live in this mishmash soup of just like quantumized strangeness where anything is possible like there is no objective truth anymore i could be standing next to someone in the grocery store and live in a totally other separate reality than them because one person believes that covid is going to kill them and i think that i'm just gonna be fine you know what i mean they're literally yeah. destroying consensus reality right now shout out to all my cult members that have subscribed to the gum road you too should be subscribed to the Gumroad at mkultramoney.gumroad.com where you can get this full unedited episode in all the pure schizophrenia we got going on here. <laughs> you have that whole unedited Drew Tang episode because if you didn't watch that one, you would love that one. You're so fucking you should up. Be watching that one after this one. $5 a month, get tons of great content, uncut episodes, content that's too fucking based for YouTube. Five dollars a month. MKUltramoney.gumroad.com. Subscribe. What is your cult's belief system? Um, the cult belief system is in Jesus Christ, in uh, eating well and not having seed oils, in um, promoting all my stuff for me. <laughs> um, of it's not cold enough. You're not chilling. Yeah, of actively knowing that you're a part of a cult, and uh, and the consciousness of it, and that the cult is literally just to benefit me and create a community of people that <laughs> oh like my, God. my content. It's, it sounds like a cult to me. That's how it usually works. Yeah. <laughs> that's but the, that's but the difference the way between my cult and um, gay influencers that are the cultists of today are influencer cringe. Influencers are cringe and they try to like pretend that they're not a cult when they really are, where I just outwardly be like, yes, I created a cult, join my cult. And literally, as soon as people join the cult, I tell them straight up the the rules and the mission statement, and it's very clear from the go. I don't I don't want any confusion. The cult is for my benefit above everything else. The fact that you're part of a community now of like minded people is just a a side effect, a positive side uh -huh. effect. But I'll tell you what to do, and that's retweet my my shill, my podcast shills. Exactly. That's, that's I have your only time. I have a leaderboard for the cult. So they earn <laughs> they earn points as they do more stuff for me, and so so you have Make you, uh, a you you have the Gumroad tier, <laughs> which is anyone that's in the cult that's subscribed to the Gumroad, they have ascended beyond the leaderboard, and they'll never be removed from the cult because they're subscribed. Mm, makes sense. And then you have the leaderboard, where because the Twitter chats cap out at seventy five people, and then I yes. have the Discord, which is like. I can have as many people in as possible. So anyone that asks to join the cult can get the cult role on discord and see that. But like the exclusive active Twitter chat is capped at 75 people. Mm -hmm. So I have a leaderboard for it and whoever's at the bottom of the leaderboard or is inactive is the first to go. get cut to make room for initiating new people. Mm, I see. I see. So reason reasonable enough. Yeah. It seems reasonable. Yeah. So I it's like it's, the Thetan, Thetans, uh, what, what the Scientologists have the Thetas, Thetans, what do they call them? Thetans, Thetans, Thetans. I think, yeah. Yeah. But the Scientologists have the Thetans, you have your leaderboard. It's not yeah. not much different. It's the most transparent cult you're gonna find. One thing that I've noticed, like with different types of people that's very different from my family, is like my family never talks about those clickbait stories like, oh, just hear about 
the so and so like killed so and so, and a father killed the son, and oh, this guy went and killed four people, and this like they never talk about that. But I do notice it in certain groups of people that I I imagine find it to be like there to be great utility in bringing that stuff all the time, and hopefully they're not creating just like totally well, as, unconstructive as as human conditions. vibration would that say would like all those people. news stories Definitely. all those news stories about you know people dying and whatnot are just ways to absorb the loosh out of everyone that gets concerned over it and whatnot mm-hmm. and i and i i tell this to sam all the time because she'll not necessarily that but she'll get into arguments with retards on twitter you know um you know like unironic incel type people and Nick Fuentes, Groper type people, you know, that say all these horrible things as women and uh, all these horrible things about women and LARP as, uh, you know, trad cats and all this stuff. And she'll get upset over it. And I'm like, why do you keep doing this to yourself? Why are you paying attention to any of this? All it's doing is is trapping you in a negative feedback loop mm-hmm. of getting upset at this stuff. You know, one one of the most important things I realized was to kind of just mm-hmm. turn it all into white noise. You have to like, oh, uh, this is why like I turn my trends on Twitter into Japanese because I can't understand yeah. it, or why like you don't watch the news. Like once you realize that, like, oh, this like manufactured fear isn't real. Like the sun's shining, it's fine. Go outside. Like the birds are still yeah, chirping. Yeah. Nothing. Go like, touch grass. Yeah, yeah. touch grass. I mean, that's the a reason only, why that's a. Oh, that's the a only thing that's of importance to me that I have to worry about is money is making money that's it everything out there's no other i don't whatever they're saying on the news i don't give a fuck whatever the latest psyop is i don't give a fuck i just dr- i drowned it all out the only thing i can i'm concerned about is money making money yeah bills that's still it. keep going bills exactly. don't stop My, you know our sense that there's a best at the end of at the mm. end of the human vibration episode it's like why does it all fucking matter i still gotta pay my bills and shit at the end of the day so you yeah. know I, as much as i love conspiracies and i love um seeking this higher knowledge i don't let it affect me i don't i don't let yes. it control me or anything i i just enjoy this i enjoy i'm right at the end of the day i'm a creator i'm a writer i'm a filmmaker i'm a podcaster i'm a youtuber i'm a comedian i'm all these things and i'm well, entertained yeah, I think... <clears throat> by these theories and i and i seek the knowledge and because it drives my art and that's what the, that's what it's always come back to and i want to find the truth out there but i never I never let it consume me. I never let it be like, oh my God, it's, you know, holy shit, these people are pedophiles and they're ruling the world and they're trying to put <laughs> us in the matrix and tr- chip us. I don't, you know, it's interesting, but I don't let it fucking affect my day to day. My day to day is, all right, how am I going to pay my fucking bills? That's my day to day. I eat healthy, you know, I got to hit the gym. That's, you know, on the list, but I eat healthy and I make sure to that anything within my own life that I can reach out and touch is taken care of all this other shit, all these psyops. I don't let it affect me. Mm -hmm. Here, here. So that, that is, that is the most important thing. I forgot the point I was even trying to get with it, but, (laughs) but yeah, you, it's, you just got to tune out this whole negative feedback loop. Yeah. And then like, that's why I stopped caring about politics too. You know, it's all fake. You know, it doesn't fucking Honestly, I was, I was just talking to, was it Lucas? Maybe I was just writing to myself how, the uh how like wrestling is unironically a better storyline than politics half the fucking time we like they're said both that like an episode I think. oh that was us yeah i, yeah, I don't yeah, remember yeah. when i said it but i was just like yeah like wrestling at this point i'm like what like what's the fucking difference between politics and and watching wwe like I, absolutely nothing my my life will benefit way more debating one piece theories than it will yeah. debating politics <laughs> exactly i i i gave away politics forever ago because yeah. what what the fuck does it matter if I convince someone to to change their mind on a viewpoint, I don't give a fuck. It's not gonna make any difference at the we've end of the got day. Our, we've got our work cut out for us, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I don't try to change anyone's oh yeah, you just gotta present. I mean, like there's always yeah. obviously and obviously like when it comes to like the more broader, like at least with the conspiracies, I mean, there are times when it I'm glad that like I, I spent the time learning because like for example, I don't like fall it does make me more aware of like propaganda for example yeah and falling for propaganda is the the most pragmatic uh application of all this is to notice when people are trying to influence your thoughts and uh and trying to make you do things that you don't that you wouldn't have otherwise done right like 
there's no reason why we there's no reason why like to bring COVID back up that everyone started freaking out about that like and that became like the central issue if it wasn't for the fact that we were like actively making it or like the media was actively making it the central issue right or before that was trump or before that like we always do it right so Mm -hmm. being aware of when you're being manipulated or influenced in that capacity is probably the most important part of kind of all this in my opinion it's also the most pragmatic and day-to-day part of it once you reach that level of your conspiracy hunt you really don't need to keep going beyond that you know as charles has said you know diminishing returns like that's the most Mm. important level to reach is that none of that shit matters and all that matters is your your you know your distinct world that's around you that you can physically touch and the people around you and all that and not this the locus weird. of control is what yeah. they yeah what you're what, you can only deal with what you are, have you're at the center of and what you actually can control yeah that's what's yeah anything anything that you can't control you should not be focusing your time and energy on because there are so many more important things that you do need to focus your time so and energy, just to right? play just to play devil's advocate real quick um the unfortunate thing is that some of these things might actually be real and some of these things yeah. do actually affect me i had to wear a mask i had family members get sick after the jab yes. i i am affected by the taxes and the gas prices and everything else that's going on you know those things do affect my immediate life but i do agree with you that at a certain point you have to stop caring and i do think that is the point of traveling into the abyss and so you can come back more sane than before a transformed yeah. person with this with this new knowledge and yeah, you begin exactly where you started and discover the place for for, for the first time. And it's mm-hmm. actually more beautiful and more insane than you ever dreamed it was. It's a far stranger reality than we can even imagine. And I think that honestly opens your brains up, your brain up to even more possibilities. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's definitely... Hero journey type point, of thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and at a certain point, it definitely is unhealthy. And um, not everyone comes out the other end. So that's the purpose of, you know, writing some of these books is to show people that, hey, if you really are about to take this journey into the psychological wonderland by following the white rabbit or whatever, you know, you're going to risk driving yourself crazy. And here's kind of a guide, you know, if you're going to do it, if you're going to let curiosity get the better of you, if you take it too far, you will start to live it. And I saw pretty insane things. And yeah, I almost lost my mind, but I came back. (laughs) So actually, this is actually a a point I wanted to bring up earlier before you get to that verse, but it, uh, it's a horseshoe in a way. And, and, you know, and not necessarily horseshoe theory, but, you know, the horseshoe of, you know, you, you're not aware of any of this. You go deep inside the rabbit hole at the, the peak of it. You lose your mind and then you come back out and you're the s- same. But as when you start it, except with that enlightenment and none of the craziness anymore. Yeah, yeah you're so back home. You're touching grass and you appreciate it more because you're like, I'm just happy to be home. And that, yeah. Back and in default reality. That's just where I that. feel that I've, I've reached in my point, thankfully. Yo, just so I'll say, wait, wait, before we continue, wait, I, like I, this is, wait, 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 before we continue, yeah, yeah, let's go because I cut this off is already. what I wanted to bring up before is that the 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 issue is like when you go into that like uh you know the underworld and the hero's journey is that not everyone has like the kind of uh what used to be called like a shamanic personality, right? Like this is kind of always my issue when people like suggest like uh, like t- uh, psychedelics too, right? Not everyone's yeah. brain is built for like not everyone can like handle having their whole the shit schism. Character. Yeah, exactly. And like shaman- a shamanic personality, there's like maybe 10, 20 percent of people who are really capable of having like their whole like a worldview completely flipped on his head and then for fun and then brought back out the other side and be fine. Like and the mm. average like the average person doesn't probably doesn't need to do that. But there are going to be there are shamans and they're always born. And those type of people are the people who will, will read a, your book or listen to this podcast or whatever and go out and uh, try to, you know, find out deeper truths and hopefully come yeah. out the other side unscathed. And just really quick, I think the world's only going to get stranger and stranger as we go mm-hmm. on. So, you know, more people will get dragged in probably unwittingly. But anyways. And, and I think it's also um, important people make this journey sooner than later because as things start to accelerate and, you know, at some point they launch shit like Project Bluebeam. Imagine, imagine right. like Project Bluebeam happening and you weren't aware of any of it. Of any of the right. pre connotations of that, or any of that, compared to anyone now that's aware of Project Bluebeam and what it entails and what will come out of it if they actually do it, and then they see it go into plan if it does happen, and then immediately they'll know. I'm like, all right, well, I'm not falling for the psyop. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And who knows? The, the Project Bluebeam as a concept could just be a psyop and misdirection, and they never do, and they do something completely different. Who knows? But yeah, so wait, but, well, yeah, so, the real blue beam is coming from your cell phone. It literally emits blue light, and yeah. social scientists at MIT have discovered that blue light can actually manipulate neurons and manipulate your thoughts so nick before we go what do you want to promote search me up on twitter or instagram n-i-c-k-h-i-n-t-o-n-n but yeah i'm working on getting a website right now where people can just order right off that the new world disorder should be ready like by the end of this week so i don't know when this episode i don't know when this episode's coming out but hopefully it'll already be out yeah so this episode will be out probably a week from today so probably like the 11th around all right sounds good man nick Thank you so much for joining us. Do you have uh, any closing statements or messages you want to leave for everyone? Go touch grass. <laughs> Don't fall down the rabbit hole. It's not so, worth it. So it's... true. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I'll leave you with a mind bender. Maybe the real singularity event is an AI observing everything through the mass surveillance state, causing everyone mm. to behave differently. I thought Ooh. you were going to say it was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> That's what I was expecting. No, fuck that. Back into the abyss. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> when you're all caught up on MK Ultra Money. Yes. Catch Verzen Lucas at Verzen Lucas, uh, V R S and Lucas with a K on Twitter, on uh, or just go to YouTube slash Versaloon where all the videos and stuff are kept. 